Hello, everybody. Um, I'm Michelle Chatham, and I'm here with Jessica Wimmer. And is it Wimmer or Weimer? It's Weimer. But <laughs> I go, I'm open. <laughs> Look at me. <laughs> it's okay. I love this, this world. Uh, right it keeps it real. Oh, so good. Jessica Weimer, IBCLC, RN, other things too. We're going to talk about that. <laughs> and the reason that we're here today is because um, you just finished the Airway Intelligence Institute mentorship for Practice Genesis. And one of the things that we worked with in your mentorship, because it, it's not just about practice, it's about your family, it's about your life, it's about who you are, why you're here how you live fully in the blueprint of who you are. Um, we also worked with your children and some of the issues that they were having around snoring, right? Mm -hmm. And in that sense, you're pretty much, I'm going to say, uh, like a lot of moms right now who are addressing oral dysfunction and issues with their children through the expansion craniofacial lens, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So the first, this is what we're going to talk about today because what what I'm seeing is that quite a few people out there are going down this path, which it's a path I helped create. It's a path I've been on for the last 12 years myself. It's a path I went down for my own children and myself. and they're they're not sustaining they're not getting their outcome and they're not sustaining their outcomes and so a lot of the a lot of what i've done in the wisdom wisdom system that i've created around helping people thrive has to do with a lot of these issues so that's what we're going to talk about today in the investment financially that you've made and things like that and where you are now so the first thing i want you to do jessica weimer with a long eye, is I want <laughs> to um, introduce yourself. I want you to tell us a little bit about your your history in healthcare, um, mm -hmm. your training. You're highly skilled, highly trained. You're an IBCLC that people would seek because you know what you're talking about, and and you've honed your craft very carefully over the years. So introduce yeah. yourself. Tell us your business. Give us how to get in touch with you. All that stuff. Oh, great! Yeah. So I am a RN IBCLC. It's actually a second career in my life, but I worked as a labor and delivery and postpartum RN for a number of years and did some lactation work there, but really got, you know, my feet dirty with it when I started having my own problems with my kiddos and mm -hmm. then began training as an IBCLC. And I left the hospital system, opened my own business, and now I'm full-time as an IBCLC. And you know, initially I felt like I was fairly well-versed in tongue and lip tie and how to help these families because I had walked it with my daughter mm -hmm. and I, you know, had this, like, this is how I went through it and I can help you. But I kept running into walls where I wasn't able to help families. And so I went and started seeking the additional training that a lot of us go through where we get that kind of advanced, how do you prep these babies? How do you go through the phrenectomy procedure? And then how do we rehab them after? Tell it, tell me what specific training you've had, because if an IBCLC is watching this, she's going to be curious about where you got that information. Yeah, it's the um, Jennifer Tao's breastfeeding with the or oral rehabilitation of the breastfeeding dyad. And great class. Great class. Great class right. Amazing. And it went through yeah, groundbreaking information. And it really did up level me in my understanding and my abilities to you know, assess oral function and to give some rehab skills and really what I was doing and looking for in this, this package um, for families. And I did a lot of other coursework in association with that. And through that, I started hearing a lot of information about older children and snoring and issues there and recognizing that my older child who had not had a phrenectomy um, had a lot of those symptoms and it kind of started me down this newer road of now what does that look like for the older child that we maybe didn't catch as an infant 
And mm-hmm. so I feel like I've kind of gone both sides of the gamut of like starting with the babies and now with the older children mm-hmm. and, you know, living it through my own personal experience, but then continuing with my education. Um, I feel like the piece that later came was you. And I found you after I started feeling thwarted by the same feeling I had had before of like, I could only get so far with some of these families, especially those really, those babies had a lot going on and I was feeling disillusioned with the process and not getting the results that I felt like I was promising for these families and looking for something more. And you fell into my field as someone who was offering some different information of, you know, there's more to a bigger picture here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and a lot of times people will find me because they're, they're burned out or like they're into, they're at the end of the information that they've gotten and they've applied and they're like, I am just going to quit and go work at Barnes and Nobles or store Starbucks and call it good. And this was a lot of fun and I learned a lot and I'm done. You weren't quite there. However, um, I also found that people will come to me when there's something on like a soul level. They're like, something's missing. Mm -hmm. And, and it's always their knowing it's always that deeper connection with self and, um, um, their wisdom, their, their deep, uh, their deep knowing. Yeah. Their intelligence is what it is. And it it has nothing to do with IQ. It's just that there's, there's a part of them they want to trust and, and they need to trust that. Yeah. And if I'm totally honest, when I found you and I kind of saw that you were blending the two, 90% of me was like, I don't even give a rip about the tongue tie stuff anymore. Cause I'm like, it's a lost cause. I want to hear what she has to say about the knowing and about you know, the spiritual growth that I was looking for and those pieces. And I kind of sold myself into the program because I'm like, well, it's also going to help my business and all this. And, but it wasn't really what I was seeking initially from you. Yeah. Um, Though I had felt all those feelings that you were talking about, especially when my own kiddos were not getting the results. And then I'm like, how do I even sell this to my clients as like the right road when I'm not even sure it worked for me, you know? And so that's the thing, right? Is that it's that point of integrity Mm -hmm. where we come to and we're like, wait a minute. And are we hyper-focused on something that is stealing our joy and our life? And, and where does this fit into the bigger picture of sustainability and sovereignty and, and all, how do we get there? Right. Well, and honestly, and that was the big moment for me that I had a, a, a soul flip with it is when my son said to me, after we had been going through all these orthodontics and we've been doing myofunctional therapy and we've been doing body work and he's had some milestone issues that we're working through. And so we were doing a lot of reflex integration and like all the things yeah. diet you know, yada, yada. And I forget, I think I was talking to him about nasal breathing and he just looked at me and he's, he's like six years old. And he says, mom, is this something else that we need to fix about me? And I thought, oh my God, my heart right. just like, just take a dagger. I know. And I'm and like, it in. the message I'm giving him, like how broken yeah. are you? And we need to fix all of this. Yeah. Yeah oh my gosh, I'm doing this all wrong. And, and it was that sovereignty piece. And I felt like I was chasing my tail to do all the right things. And then they still weren't working. And so then it was like, well, I'm not doing it hard enough. So mm. you just got to go harder and do it turn more. Up the intensity, just turn yeah. up the intensity. Yeah. Honestly, diet's not enough. We got to cut everything. And like, Ugh. it's just, oh, yep. Their tonsils are still inflamed. It must be, we didn't cut sugar enough. And like, it just, was always something else. Yeah. And that was the wall. I think think you're the wisdom in your son too, is at some point it starts to feel punitive. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It starts to feel really um, negative. And then you're like, well, and what then, and then you get into the whole dynamic of, is it ever, is it ever going to get to the point where I can just freaking enjoy my life and get on with 
Right. So, and it, yeah, it feels punitive. It feels like this, it's yeah. people call it the rabbit hole. It's, it's, it's really a kind of a black hole feeling because you're like, here, take my whole wallet, take my whole life, take every ounce of joy I had in eating a piece of bread. And with, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, just, you just know, I don't even know anything worth living for now, you know, anymore. Right. Just, yeah. Yeah. And I felt that, and he was feeling that. And it was just like, there was a number of those kind of things that it hit me that there was no end along the way. You know, we were talking about like lip paping at night. And I remember asking, so when are we done? And there, the nice, wonderful myofunctional therapist was like, oh, I still take my lips every night. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, so I'm never done. Like, I'm always going to have to take my lips for the rest of my life to achieve lip confidence and function. Like, yeah. that's not, I guess it was this moment of like, this isn't fixing anything. This is again, we're just bandaging, bandaging. And like, clearly my lips never learned to stay closed. If I have to tape them for the rest of my life. And, and it was the same with him and his results of like, oh, well, we're all done with this, but here's the next appliance here's the next thing. And yeah, it it just felt like it was never ever going to end. I can, I can remember 10 years ago when, um, I was really, I'll call it deep in that world where, um, you know, I went to all the residencies and I did, I don't know, three or four, like foundational oral facial myofunctional therapy trainings. And, I was speaking and teaching and, and, you know, um, bullhorning this, this, this sequence, this care, right. Of, well, you got to do this and you address that and you get the, you, you get the releases here and then this happens and then you do the appliance and then da, 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 da. And then I was, of course I was, I was parallel having my own experience with it. And underneath that were my children having an experience as well. And I can remember like right at shortly after I had my own tongue tie release done and it just my whole world collapsed and um and in the best way possible right because that's how it needed to complete that cycle of me going oh wait a minute for as many people as this might be absolutely the best thing on the planet there are going to be probably an equal, at least equal number of people on the other side of the grid that are really struggling. Mm -hmm. What about them? Right. What about them? And, and they're going to be like, even with my, myself, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars in education and, and, you know, um, just working so many hours a week trying to help people and all that. I'm like, this is, and I can remember looking at my ex-husband one day and going, this is not sustainable. This is mm-hmm. not sustainable. And, and then I'm like, what, what do we do? And then when I had to rebuild my own health from the ground up, I was like, oh, and it fit in so perfectly with who I was as a person or am as a person, because I'm like, oh, it's foundational. How foundational can we get? And then that's when I came in with, oh, okay, this goes back to DNA, lineage, culture, all the things that we did as people um, in community that we've cherry picked them out now and called them therapy. Well, how do we go back and build family life around the things that actually keep us sustainably healthy, right? Authentic. Yes, and authentic. Yeah. And that 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 the structure is a is a is a rising up of the energetics and in the in the ergonomics and the in the um uh morphogenetics and also the chemical and the metabolic. How do we how do we let let that become this really rock solid foundation on which the structure emerges from right as this but then we've also got things you know and from the modern area era that are draining against that and at the same time as humans can we make life meaningful again and not completely therapied therapy joy out of our out of our whole freaking lives now i will say this the the practitioners that you used are literally the tops of their field I, I get it. I, I was that person 10 years ago where I was this and this and this. And we need those people to be excellent. 
we we absolutely need them. We need for them to continue to create. We need them for to continue to be able to do this this um, this treatment, right? Mm -hmm. And we also need to be able to hold near and dear the the souls of our children so that they are not defeated by the time, you know, I, I tell people all the time, you could you could literally have a college education in your kid's mouth by the time you get them out of high school. Yep. Yeah. And we were okay. on our way. <laughs> on your way? Like how far, how far in the hole are you with it? I mean, between everything that we've done for both of them, we're in that 15 to $20,000. And I mean, and it was honestly a huge source of conflict in my marriage because when I wanted to do the expansion for my son, I mean, it was a big price tag. I feel like that one was almost 10,000 in itself for all of it. And he was just, he, he was like, I don't think we need to do this. And he felt, I think he felt it before I did that, like, this isn't going to make the change and it's going to cost us a lot of money and it's never going to end. Mm -hmm. And I was like, no, you don't know. Cause I know, and I'm trained and I do this and you got to trust me. And finally he was kind of like, all right, but now here we are. <laughs> Was like, hey baby, you were right. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, that moment. But at the same at the same time, you know, um, it's pretty much almost a given in our in our society now that um sometime between the ages of eight, eight and twelve, a doctor or dentist is going to refer for orthodontics. It's just a given because craniofacially we're to that point with malocclusion where it's 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 um it's it's fully expressing all the time now. So, um, and you made a great choice with the person that you chose to go through this expansion. However, you had an outcome in mind, which was the elimination of snoring. And his, I was told that his airway was only 20% of what it should be by his age and growth. And yeah. so it was airway expansion and snoring for him. And, and thinking yeah. there is that when you get the airway to a certain size, you will no longer snore. That's the rationale. That the yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then when you got done, what kind of airway did you have? So I still just cringe a little bit. I remember like we did the scan at the end and everybody has this awkward moment of like, it doesn't look any different. The airway looks the same. Even though orthodontically the expansion was really clear, he has great spacing, his arch has totally changed, but the actual scans didn't look any different. And he had done beautifully in his myo, lip confidence had been improved. He was no longer mouth breathing, like great oral function, all the check, check, checks. Yeah. But, and we actually had to then, you know, from our, our myo office, reach out to the orthodontist and be like, which, are you okay with this? Like, what do we think about this? And, you know, we kind of left it with like, he just needs more time for that mandible to come forward and make more room. And it's just a developmental growth piece. And by the way, we could also do this other appliance to get A plus results is what I was told. Like we have A results, but for A plus, we'll do this other appliance, which will help bring that mandible more forward. And that was going to be how much money and how long? It was going to be another like six months plus that we were going to have this one. I didn't get a price because I was already priced out. Yeah. Yep. I just remember my son crying as soon as he saw a picture of it. And I was standing behind him like, don't worry, baby. We're not doing this. Like, let her say it, but we're not doing it. So, um, you know, I, and I, oh, go the ahead. story is still present. And so, I mean, and that it did improve but it, it's still there. And like, it definitely flares at different times. And now that I, I understand more of the foundational pieces, I see the correlation there with it coming and going. And that that was a piece that we were, we were missing. Like yeah. we're doing all this work up here, but it wasn't enough for him to hold it. Yeah. I mean, he still gets compliments at the dentist about his beautiful teeth space. Of course they are. Gorgeous. Really Absolutely. And, and so but happy about be. that. <laughs> And he had body work too. So it wasn't that there was a piece missing, right? Yep. With yep. 
paradigm. You also went the the extra mile and did the body work and yeah. got quality body work. From my and favorite provider that I refer my patients to. Absolutely. Yeah. It was, she's does a great job. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And, and so, um, it's so interesting to me and, and the appliance I know about, cause I did that residency as well. And I, I know that appliance and it's a, it's a, it's a freaking beast. I mean, I would look at it and go, Oh, hell no, I ain't put that shit on no, oh, I get it. I mean, I get it, you know, and to a child, you're like, to a child that's already struggling yeah. to think about putting something like that, mouth, they literally just stop breathing. They just go, you know, it's just like not happening, you know. That was pretty much where, and I almost laughed when I saw the picture. So I was just like, oh. <laughs> no, it was, are you effing kidding me? Right? That was pretty much, and I'm like, I cannot what? imagine going back to my husband now with this picture being like, well, we just got to do this. Like, <laughs> he's going to be you crazy. Woman, so. No, yeah. No woman who absolutely loves her husband wants to have to do that. <laughs> um, shoots. Okay. So, so here's the thing is, um, uh, how's he doing now? We oh, they did recommend surgery. They recommended surgery too, right? The tonsils and the anoids getting them removed. Yes. For both yeah. my kids, my daughter, even more so, but yes, we had talked about that. That was a potential that we could go there, that they were enlarged and they had remained enlarged. We did get a little bit improvement with the expansion and the nasal breathing, but I mean, it's, it's one of those pieces that I definitely see it come and go like again with with you know he's definitely sensitive to allergy season and and his charge over winter he is one that I feel like really needs really the sunshine. Yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah and so I, as I've become more aware there and more intentional on those pieces this allergy season as we're coming into it it's it's been really interesting because he's not having the same issues and I mean, we in the past would have to medicate him almost daily to keep him from his eyes swelling shut. And like, I'm doing homeopathy, we're doing, you know, all the different salines and all this stuff. And it was just like barely manageable. And I haven't had to do anything this season yet, you know? And so I feel like our intentionality is just already showing some progress. Like we got a long way to go, but we're getting some base level resilience starting. So. And you're talking about like the things that you learned in mentorship with, you know, actually working on at the mitochondrial health level, increasing his ATP, getting more power running through his body. And that's the energetic morphogenetic um, piece of his, of his foundation. That's that leg. And then also um, you also, I think one of the things that, that you learned about yourself and I kind of held your feet to the fire with was you as a person, you as a blueprint have the tendency to open things up and not fully complete. Right. Yeah. And that's kind of what some people would call it your personality. However, that's, that's a, that's a thing in your being that you have a tendency to do. And so when we started talking about that and actually working with you on that, and I came in and kind of held your feet with that. And I'm like, okay, you know, you can know it. And unless you, you can know it and it, well, you can, you can have the information, yeah. but unless you have an experience with it and create knowledge and have an experience with it and create knowing and have an experience with it to get to wisdom, you're never going to expand in that way and help your child to create along those lines too, so that he knows his body and he knows how to take care of it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And that was definitely my journey. And I feel like it was partially because I was in this hammer, hammer nail of like, I just got to keep going. I got to keep trying harder, but I had wore myself out of yeah. like, this is never going to end. So why am I, I still beating my head against the wall. So I was getting to this place where I would just give up really yeah. easy trying new things because I feel like I was almost losing faith that it was ever going to change yeah. in any way that at this point I might as well eat the bread and you know forget it all because yeah like why am I torturing my whole family for for this goal that maybe isn't attainable and like I was coming to this place of sadness that like maybe this is just the best that we can do yeah you know and 
And maybe that's enough for me now. Whereas now I feel like you've given us tools of coming in at the base level um, and really building that foundation. And I'm trying to be slower and more intentional about it and doing a layer at a time that really becomes part of my life and my lifestyle instead of another therapy that I'm just like got to get through. And And I think- How old is your son too right now, Jessica? He's going to be nine on Saturday. Okay, so so here's the thing too with, uh, and this is what I found when I was doing myofunctional therapy and I would have uh, families bring me their 15 year olds who were, who were basically staring down the barrel at, you know, um, uh, surgery for open bite and three times back in braces and things like that, like relapse, I call them collapse cases. They call them relapse cases. And I'm like, okay, where's stable for this child? And, and doing myofunctional therapy with boys especially who are of a certain age is, is a little more challenging because they're like, you know, they really don't want to. Right. So when you start talking about reflex integrating a nine-year-old, they're like, what you want me to, you want me to what, you know, because now they're, they're becoming, um, they're getting to the age of, of accountability. Right. And also prepubescent, which also adds in the testosterone, you know, threat throw with the soft tissue um, changes, the, the soft tissue swelling and, and changes, um, which is natural that goes along with that bulking, that bulking out piece and that pubescent piece that that goes along with normal growth and development. So these these kids, like what I what I like to do is find out who this kid is. Like, who are you? Why are you here? That's what our indigenous and tribal cultures used to do is like, yeah. Who are you? What what are, what are you here for? How can I create um, um, things and and ways for you to strengthen your body for the purpose that you're here for? And so, like, I think one of the things we came up with him was climbing and crawling and really pulling that upper body um, mm-hmm. long and wide, like we do in Awaken Your Bow when we're when we're on the ground, you know, a couple of times a week. Yeah, and the more outdoor time he gets the better like he's just a different person and my husband and I know that for him and like getting outside and we have rocks and hills he can climb and trees and he loves to do those kind of things and in the winter we go to the rock climbing wall and um he he is he thrives with physicality even though he would I would say mentally is a very studious quiet person he has recognized his need for an outlet and being outside yeah. And we all see the difference when he hasn't yeah. done it. And so. also like in our, in our, in our more indigenous cultures and in our tribal cultures, um, a, a boy, a mass, a male, his age would begin initiations. So he would, you know, there's a transition, the age of biological breastfeeding would have been complete at six and he would have been integrated into the ma- the male culture, um, hunting, you know, providing for the, for the um, the camp, um, being taught to make whatever weapon was necessary at that time, but with um, you know colonization and modernization and civilization, um, domestication, all of those things where they're required to be sedentary and housed and indoors, it's actually bumping up right against the ways in which the 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 meat suit actually. De, you know, wants to connect with nature and, and grow and develop. And so what I find even working with men who uh, in, in, in uh, relationship with uh, their families is there were um, initiation processes that were dropped out that developmentally caused laps and gaps that we can go back and integrate and it completely changes the way that they look. And mm-hmm. so for our, our younger um fellas or younger boys um, who are under the influence of, of creating these hormones and they're beginning that process, providing them with this resistance is so imperative to, to kick on that expansion and, and all of that. And then you add to it 
um, you know, they have to actually go back and recover for themselves all the things that happened in birth or might be, you know, we call it a birth trauma or something like that, where they might be holding losses or grief in their body and they can release that and then begin that, that, that expansion process. For sure. Yeah. And he had that. I was in a pretty severe car accident, pregnant with him Whoa. and was almost, he was almost delivered at 27 weeks. Wow. Uh, yeah. Where I was hospitalized and, and you could see it. Now I look back and in, in all of his infant pictures, there was a lot of body issues that I didn't have any awareness of back then. Yeah. And he was a baby who never crawled straight to walking. Yeah. And yeah. And I feel like we're catching up now. Like there was a lot of that where he is feeling himself out and that push and pull really really resonates. Like I can see him trying it on for size all the time and finding his limits and, you know, he's yes. and yeah. letting him do it. That's so important because uh, our kids need to find their limits. They need to find that edge of, oh, this is dangerous or this creates this emotion or this feeling in me. And this is what my body can do or, you know, and then back off that a little bit and create things that actually develop more strength so they can push into it. It's just like we do when we work out now. I mean, even your body now doing Awaken Your Bow for almost a year now, your body has changed a lot. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's It's been huge for me, the Awaken Your Bow. And, and honestly, even though I feel like I've made all this change, then when I spent a few days in Amanda's presence, hands on. I'm like, whoa, there was a lot more work to do. And she just keeps up leveling you each time. And it, it definitely brings up all my areas that I'm stuck. And then it's interesting to see where my kids mirror me in yeah. some of them. And, you know, I'm like, oh, look at this, look at this. We both got, you know, the same hip restrictions going on. And, but it almost gives me this ability then to be like, well, I know what to do with that because I'm working on my own issue. So now let's, let's all, we get in there together. So I tell people all the time, if you want to change, change those patterns in your children, you have to change them in yourself and you have to locate them first. So, you know, I, I used to 10 years ago, I would say, you know, refer people to body workers. And now I'm like, you know what? don't really if you can if you can have sovereignty in that area and avoid outsourcing yeah I feel like it's so much more beneficial and then only use specific release techniques for certain things mm -hmm. the power is in the activation the power is in the brain to frame the power is how we remap neuroplastically all of those processes so we hold ourselves differently so that our, our, our tensegrity, our frame actually looks different. And our children can feel that when yeah. they touch us, you know, they know, they, they, they know where we are in space sometimes better than we know where we are in space. And so the way I explain it is our kids as when they're, when they're young, the highest form of rapport is to look like somebody. And that creates a lot of safety in our infants. And so when they hold themselves a certain way and they're mirroring off of how you feel, yeah. that's a trans, it's a co-created experience. That's a dyadic conscious experience, right? Yeah, for sure. So to remap that is, is really powerful. It is, especially because I feel like the, the approach now is to try to always go in and remap the baby. And then we keep wondering why they're not holding it. Yes. Right. And like everybody's doing all these things to the baby and they just keep going right back because like you said, it's this dyad experience. And I feel like we know that in some places, but then we kind of don't follow it all the way through. Like we, we don't follow that string through the whole maze and we kind of stop it. Like, well, yeah, feeding it's about the dyad, but then that's so it. Is, like you can't just send this baby to a body worker over and over and then be like, check. Yeah. Uh, but I guess it, the other piece that you've really helped me with, with families is that, you know, they're having their own experience and we got to meet, meeting them where they're at. Like not everybody's looking to go down, you know, and dig up the roots, you know, and, and that may be where I'm at, where I'm just ready to like tear this house down and rebuild it. But 
you know, some people are like, all right, we'll we'll put a little lipstick on this house, (laughs) you know, and I feel like if you just can plant the seed of like, there's more Mm -hmm. when you're ready. Yeah. You know, is part I, of it. I, I call it remodeling the third story bathroom when the real issues in the foundation. Right. Yes. Or, 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 sliding down the yeah. hill in the ocean. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All of that. It's like, it, it, and, and it, you know, when you're talking about capacity of a person to be able to make changes that are actually sustainable and hold that you know, that's a very fluid, that's a fluid field and it, and it's, and it has a lot of factors to it. Um, And so what's, what's really beautiful is when you have like um, enough information, knowledge, knowing, and all the experience that underpinned that as a practitioner is to be able to help people engage with that when they're ready. Yeah. When they're ready. Yeah. And I, feel like we have so many moms in total complete burnout with their new babies that it it is overwhelming to come in and be like hey we just got to repattern you like let's do it and they're like I can hardly survive my day so it's I find like that toolbox you've given a foundation is so helpful for these moms of like okay well then let's go base level start charging you up so you even have the capacity to have this conversation and yeah that's where so many families are. And that's why when we come in with these kind of top level interventions, it's just destined to not get yeah. the outcomes. Cause it's like you said, it's like, we're putting on the new roof when the whole foundation is crumbling. And it's not that we don't need the new roof someday. Like maybe we do some places need the new roof, but it doesn't matter if the whole house slides down the hill. So, you know, yeah. Yeah. So it's so true. Um, in deep, deep bow and respect for people who are doing what they can and doing it in an accordance to their belief systems and how, how they perceive and are in the world. And there are people out there who are like, there's this something in their spirit. They're like, I don't know how long I can keep this up. This is not sustainable. And so then you're like, okay, well, at what point do you want to go in and really calibrate the, the ecology to the environment of this child, to their growth and development so that they're resourcing and really, um, you know, uh, in alignment with why they're here and, and drawing power from every aspect of their life that answer is going to be different for every family. And there's no judgment either way. It's just that when you get to a point where everything's going sideways, it's like, well, then what do you do? Well, if at that point you're, you're at a place where you're like, okay, it's time to really go in and get ecological about this and calibrate us um, because it's in alignment with our purpose as people, then yeah. things get really simple, really quickly. I mean, I look at the number of things that you quit doing. It's not that you kept doing those things and you took on other things. You actually went, you actually sorted it. You took it, took it all and dumped it in the floor and said, I'm keeping this. I'm throwing that. I'm going to do this. I'm going to get rid of like, you got rid of like se- at least 75 or 80% of what you were doing before. Yeah. And I feel so much lighter for it, yeah. which I think that piece of how we feel, I always undermined its power and validity mm-hmm. of like, that that matters. Like it was always just like, you got to grit through it, even if it's misery. And like that, that limits us. And, and it, we see that in our body too, when you kind of have, that's my mentality on life and how I'm coming at it right now. But yeah, I, I feel like the simplifying into what resonates changed everything for me. And so, yeah, yeah, it, it feels really good to have simplified. And honestly, if you had seen me when I had these kiddos as babies, I probably wouldn't have been ready to hear anything that you were saying oh. then. Like I yeah. was, I was dead set on what we were doing and the path that we were on. And I felt like I needed to have those experiences to get here. And for a while I beat myself up about it, 
like look at all the things I did like that I regret or that I didn't do or I could have done this differently sooner but then it just became like no like we all needed we needed that path to get to here you know and I, I, needed our I, baby. Feel, I feel that way about myself too I look back and I'm like I've got multiple six figures in my education and still going to school and still, and you know, and still, and, and have multiple six figures in my education. And, and here's the biggest takeaway that I got from all the things that I learned. And I, I went to many residencies, worked with many top level practitioners, did all the things. What I, here's what the thing, here's what that prepared me for is the understanding of how energy works in the system. Yeah. And that's the most, that's a, I'm a foundational type uh, learner and, and what I do is everything is around the foundation. And when you pay attention to how energy works in the system, that's probably one of the most valuable things that you can have is because what people don't understand is all of these therapies and surgeries and um, uh, modalities, even body work to a certain extent costs you energy. So unless you're adding to it, eventually you do burn out and, and deplete. Yeah, I feel it. I feel like that is what happened to me. I just was slowly draining my tank with more and more and more and more. And I just got to a place where I'm like, I can't do any of it anymore because I'm so empty that I'm just going to give up and lay down and die. That was kind of how I felt about like, I'm just done with all of it, even the parts that felt good. I just was like, it's all so much work and for what, but that's where you kind of came back in and re-energized me like, all right, I hear you, but let's, let's start plugging some of the things in that you maybe need. And then see if you have an experience with that and a little bit at a time. And it started being like, all right, I like that. Oh, okay. I'm feeling a little better. And here we go. Like it's all, it's that slow journey is my journey for sure of like, I got to come back online a little bit at a time. Mm -hmm. So is your husband, is your husband happier with it now? Yes. I think he's very relieved that we're kind of going into this more self-sustaining. Like, I feel like that resonates for him instead of outsourcing to all these other providers all the time. Cause he was just feeling like, like how, when is it going to end? Like, why do we have to go to all these other people to fix us? Yeah. I you know, don't feel like we need this fixing. And I feel like there's this piece of him that has that deep, like ecological understanding of what he needs that I sometimes am like, you, you don't know. Cause he's not very like touchy feely talk about it, but there's wisdom there when I stop and I'm like, yeah, actually he, he just knows it without having to think about it. Mm. And I overthink it. <laughs> so a lot of times, you know, as women, we do that because here's the thing, and 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 we've talked about this, is that what happens is the way that this whole paradigm is laid out now is really fear-based. Mm-hmm. And our amygdalas as women are already huge. And then you start telling us something's wrong now and something's going to be even more wrong then. And we're like, ah, you know, we can hardly get a hold of ourselves. And then the only thing that we really think we know how to do is to find someone who knows more than we do. So we go for more information. Yeah. So we go for the information. And then what happens is a lot of times, a lot of times because we, who we are in um, kind of the impotent ways that we are in the world, we'll, we'll not apply some things that are very important to our outcomes we're blind to that and we don't we don't see it but if we did live in a village where we had aunties and tutus and and people around that were like you know girl you're 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 kind of missing something here you want you circle back around to that and and report back you know and so I feel like sometimes that's the role I play is kind of this auntie tutu role that I'm like love you I'm going to share something with you here's an opportunity for you if you want to take it you know and and, um, and then I've also been known to just like bonk somebody over the head, you know, which, you know, doesn't, you know, it's not always the, always not my best like moment. Um, but it can be very effective for certain yeah. people. I don't know, you know, I, yeah. I'm one of those people <laughs> and 
even when you would say something to me, sometimes I would like not hear what you were saying. I'd still hear what I wanted to hear yeah, and the bias. Come back and hear it again and be like, that isn't what she said at all to me. Like I need, I need to come back and take off my judgment on this yep. and hear her. And then I would, oh, okay, wait a minute. Yeah. It, it is interesting how you you see everything through your own lens and take oh, that. Into we, we totally filter through our bias. And that's yeah. the thing too, is when we're, we actually have energy and vitality running through our system. We are, it's almost like we don't, our biases aren't as valuable to us anymore. We're like, oh gosh, well, yeah, I was judging the hell out of that. Okay. Well, if I take that <laughs> off, yeah. then what now? And you lose that emotional attachment to it. And you're like, oh yeah, I can see how that can be true. I can also see how this could be true. And okay. So which one, you know, do I need to make a choice here? Or do I just go, oh yeah. Okay. And turn around and go the other way. It, you know, it almost doesn't really matter. I think you have said to me multiple times, what do you want to have an experience with? Like, it's your choice. You can have an experience with anything you like. So do you want to have that experience? And putting that power back into my hands of like, oh, I'm choosing this or not. Mm-hmm. And like, maybe I'm choosing something that really sucks, but I even, I chose that. And I maybe needed to have that sucky experience, but I have to own that it was was mine. Um, but that even has given me a lot of power. I feel like of like, okay, this is, this is the experience I'm choosing to have right now. And I'm, I'm in it. Yeah. So yeah. It's so good. If you could offer encouragement or a word of wisdom to people who are listening to this, who are like, oh my God, she's like, I'm like her, you know, her mirror right now. I'm her twin right now. We're actually going through this same thing what would you say to them? I would say that take a deep breath is always my kind of first big thing that this is not something that there is an emergency and we have to make choices right away. Like this is your choice. This is not anybody else's choice. And so take that deep breath of like, what feels in alignment to me? Cause I feel like so many moms come to me with, I've been told to do this. And I'm like, but do you want to? And they're like, no, I don't. And I'm like, then we're going to make a choice that that's maybe not our road, but let's talk about what our experiences look like down each road. And then you choose. Mm -hmm. Um, But, and I think to take the blame piece out of it for mothers of like, I have to solve this problem right now, that this is all falling on my shoulders to make this right choice at this right moment. And I feel like that's part of the panic drive of like, you are all doing the best we can do. And this baby is here for you, you know, and for you to have an opportunity through the experiences that this diet is making together. I feel like babies, especially hard babies that are having some of these issues are our gift and they're openings for us of ways that we need to see reflected back into our own lives of areas that we need to dig deeper Um, And the hard babies are the ones that really rip you open and show you like all the places that you need to look deeper. Mm -hmm. And so just digging into that and taking it slow and that you'll come through the other side. So that was me. I felt like I was drowning with both my babies. And now I just, especially my really hard second one, like she was my gift. Like I would not be here with you if I hadn't struggled through all the things I struggled with, with her. And I think all of our kids are here to do that for us. So, yeah, absolutely. I call those, I call the ones who come to us and stop time. They are masters of time. Yeah. And they make us face, they, well, they don't make us, they give us the opportunity to face so much of ourself and what it means to be alive and what it means to to have a purpose and on all of those things and it just gives us an opportunity to ask different questions yeah yeah absolutely that was and you can choose to not ask the questions sure yeah but I see it, I see it all the time I mean when I you know working in tongue tie multi uh, integrative tongue tie clinic it's like just fix it hammer nail boom boom and yeah. I'm like that's okay. 
you're congruent. <laughs> Let's go. You know, Let's do it. right. You know, that's that's your perspective. That's the way it's gonna. It's that's the way you want it. Um, uh, you're completely congruent with that, and right. you know, yep. I'm gonna, I'm gonna help you get your baby ready and help you as much as I can. You know, in the aftermath, and here we go. Ride <laughs> this train together. Cool. Yeah. Well, and that's what I feel like I say to my families is I'm not driving the train. You are right. But I'll ride it with you wherever you want to go. And I'll give you what I can give you to help on that journey. So, you know, I I don't have any judgment about which direction they choose to go. Not at all. Right. So excellent. Thank you. Thank Thank you you for sharing from the heart. Thank you from, for uh, letting us, um, into what's for a lot of people just super private and they don't know how to talk about it and and admit it and you know I think a lot of times in this in this um whole airway world and I've seen this for years just the egos at play and the shots fired at each other and and you know the the constant you know creating of more therapeutics and all that um it, it's, it's, uh, sometimes it's challenging to, I know it is for me to be the person who wants to go into the ground with it. Like, yeah. no, let's go, let's go down instead of up, um, into all of that more. And, and so, um, when we start talking about these things, the, the, um, sub, I call them suboptimal outcomes, um, that, you know, when you didn't get your outcome, that's a, that's, that's a, it's hard to talk about those things. Nobody wants to hear that. It's not, it doesn't make the numbers on the, the research look good, you know? Yeah. And you know, there's going to be those people who are going to be like, well, that's because you didn't do it right. Right. All the time. Every day. I think I did. And yeah, I I feel like we have to have room for this conversation. If we're really going to help families, like we need to ask why didn't we get our outcome? And it doesn't mean that even like the things that we did over here didn't have value. It just means, and like we needed an and here. And, you know, that's how we're really going to help people and help babies. So Mm -hmm. I love it. Okay. Thank you so much. And what's your website? I am www.bornandfed.com. So, and it's the same for Instagram and Facebook too. So born and fed. And what's your specialty? I would say reflux babies. I have a special heart for, cause that was my daughter. And so definitely colicky reflux babies are where I put the majority of my time, but I definitely do a lot with the tongue and lip tie families too. And we talk about what we can do there. So those are my two passion projects, but everything and anything, right? We'll do it all. <laughs> you're, 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 uh, you're you're a lot more ecological now so you're right. helping a lot you're helping a lot of people who are falling through the cracks so well and they go as, deep as they want to go so that's definitely how I have it set up if if they want to go down to the base level and dig up the roots let's do it love it okay thanks, thanks so much all right